Human Rights Protection and Monitoring Consortium was born out of the realization that Zimbabwe's current challenges in terms of the humanitarian situation required a coordinated approach in resource mobilization and provision of life-saving support to affected individuals, as well as engagement with key stakeholders, including the government. Under the CEDA consortium, um, I think at the beginning of this particular project, we decided to come up with a collaborative effort to work with different partners because as the commission, we realized that we cannot work on our own. We started then having a referral pathways where partners were referring cases to us, uh, where they thought the commission was better placed to deal with these cases because, for example, we do not litigate. So we were able to refer cases that needed litigations, especially in cases of eviction, were able to um, refer some cases to Zimbabwe lawyers for human rights. So I think this collaborative effort has been able to yield um, positive results in terms of responding to human rights cases. The consortium has been running since 2016 and has managed to see 75,000 affected individuals with emergency life-saving support. This was done under a referral system of the project with partners playing an important role in evidence-based response through documentation of human rights needs. The consortium has also contributed towards policy development and encouragement with activities centered on domestication of the African Union Consortium for the protection and assistance of internal displaced persons in Africa. Each partner in the consortium contributes certain skills and services to support the Zimbabwe Human Rights Commission in its mandate of human rights monitoring and protection in Zimbabwe, with IOM leading in capacity building and sharing international best practices and engaging government in high-level diplomacy. The Zimbabwe Human Rights NGO Forum has been in existence since 1998. And basically, its main focus is to deal with victims of organized violence and torture. The NGO Forum uh, is a forum and therefore has a secretariat. And the secretariat coordinates with, at the moment, the NGO Forum has 22 members. And of those 22 members, the secretariat coordinates and ensures that uh, we assist each other in the monitoring, either with the secretariat of other NGOs or together with the monitors uh, in the various areas throughout the country. Counseling Services Unit is a medical institution that does medical, psychological rehabilitation of victims of organized violence and torture, and we have been in existence since 2003. The role of CSU is to provide holistic rehabilitation. Uh, during the work uh, of the consortium, the uh, victims of uh, human rights violations and during those rights violations some people get injured uh, assaulted and worst case scenario is uh, they get tortured or sexually assaulted and csu then picks up the pieces in providing uh, a comprehensive rehabilitation in form of documenting their stories getting them medically consulted with and then also getting them counseled by our uh, psychologists and counselors. In 2020, Zimbabwe witnessed the impact of the COVID-19 pandemic and its devastating effects on health and livelihoods. The outbreak of COVID-19 broadened the scope of the project to focus on risk mitigation and communication. Amidst the travel restrictions, lockdown and other containment measures, IOM, together with its network of consortium partners, quickly adapted in delivering services and assistance to migrants and vulnerable persons. With the recent outbreak of COVID-19, there was an expanded scope of the project to include health awareness, provision of PPEs, capacity building and training of village and frontline health workers, 
health screening and profiling at all ports of entry. Uh, following the outbreak of uh, COVID-19, uh, IOM was actually approached by the uh, Bay Bridge uh, District Civil Protection Committee on how best uh, it can support uh, uh, within the work of COVID. And uh, the initial response was uh, the uh, provision of non-food item kits, NFI kits, that we handed over to the uh, local uh, uh, civil protection committee. Thereafter, after the setting up of the quarantine facility within the district at the former Rainbow Hotel, IOM came in handy to support uh, Minister of Social Welfare in the profiling and registration of returned migrants and as well as in the uh, generation of manifest, passenger manifest for the uh, transfer of migrants from the Bay Bridge uh, Quarantine Center to their respective provincial quarantine facilities. So we have migrants that are returning voluntarily, uh, those that have maybe uh, faced challenges due to the effects of COVID-19, the lockdowns in the uh, host countries. Uh, these ones, they were mainly affected because of uh, the um, uh, lockdown restrictions in those are uh, our countries where most of them had lost their jobs and some of them they actually uh, engaged in informal sector uh, so due to lockdown they couldn't like find means of survival so they had to come back on their own voluntarily uh, the key success around uh, the containment of COVID-19 was uh, around uh, the capacitation of uh, frontline officials on infection prevention and control so that in the execution of their duties or dealing with their, uh, the clients within the various uh, uh, areas of their work, that includes the border post, that includes the quarantine center, IOM did support their capacitation on uh, uh, IPC, infection prevention and control. We also went further to also provide hand washing uh, facilities within the border post, within the uh, quarantine center and also in strategic areas within uh, the uh, district where in most public offices we did provide hand washing stations and uh, the liquid soap there too in a way of trying to also contain the spread of the virus. And we've also even been supporting the hospital with transport and logistics, um, mainly by, uh, by giving them coupons for fuel uh, to transport to ferry patients from the isolation to the hospital in case we have suspected cases. Uh, because the, the challenge that the government of Zimbabwe has been facing is human resources and also those kinds of um, the, the fuel challenges, fuel shortages, transport challenges. So IOM has really been filling that gap and th that uh, particular support has been appreciated. We also help the Minister of Health with coordinating uh, meetings within the district. Uh, when we have a resurgence of, uh, of COVID-19, we have meetings where we coordinate the stakeholders who are responding to COVID-19. We update them on um, the current um, epidemiological situation and we agree on, 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 on solutions and steps that we should take. If we need to step up, we agree uh, through those um, um, meetings and those task force at district level. My duties as an NS here at Forbes Border Post to so screen returning residents and truck drivers traveling to Zimbabwe inside. As for the returning residents, we start by screening, encouraging hand washing, sanitization. Then after that, we check for their, if they have COVID results. The COVID-19 pandemic posed significant challenges for the consortium, affecting the provision of much needed support to various communities. The pandemic exacerbated vulnerabilities of migrants due to various factors, including socioeconomic and medical issues. Some migrants became stranded due to the mobility restrictions, while others lost income because of unemployment and unfavorable market conditions. In spite of the challenges, IOM and its consortium partners found innovative ways to address these issues and assist migrants and the government of Zimbabwe in addressing these issues. PDI was um invited to participate in district uh, COVID-19 response task force meetings that were coordinated by the district development coordinators offices and in our participation of those meetings we became aware of uh, the context with which uh, we are operating as, as an organization and 
we did note that there were issues to do with uh, misinformation. We did note that there were issues to do with misconceptions. For instance, the people in the rural areas, they had a feeling that COVID-19 is something for the urban areas. It's something that is happening outside the country. And these are the, some of the misconceptions that uh, we had to confront in the uh, various meetings that we were attending as Partnership for Development Initiative. Normally you will find with deportees, Botswana tests the migrants as they get into cells. Now they keep them for about two weeks or more. Obviously by the time they come to Zimbabwe, their results have expired. So we then need to go through the process of testing them for COVID-19. As nurses, we have been trained by the doctors to do the tests, and the two nurses at the point of entry can do the PCR test to the migrants. So after they've been screened and they've been line listed, by line listing we say we are taking their details, who are they, where they, do they come from, and uh, their full physical address. In case, in the event that they turn out to be positive, it, where they are going from the quarantine centers, they need to be informed. IOM Zimbabwe has adopted a screening form used to assess vulnerabilities and provide assistance to identified vulnerable migrants. Identified vulnerable migrants are assisted with menstrual kits for women and hygiene kits for men. These contain basic hygiene essentials required to maintain adequate hygiene standards. The major milestones that we've had in terms of the projects was the introduction of what we call mobile human rights clinics. I think it's well known that the Commission has two offices, one in Harare and one in Bulawayo. So um, we are not visible everywhere in the country and I think it was important for us to be able to be reachable in um, you know, different parts of the country other than Harare and Bulawayo. The Zimbabwe Human Rights Commission was not visible in most parts of the country but mobile clinics brought them closer to the people for easier access. The officials explained the roles and duties of the department in complaints and investigation. There are one-on-one -on -one sessions that have seen a willingness to speak more freely as compared to wider community sessions. Statistics have also shown that mainly men visit the Harare and Bulawayo offices. More women being a vulnerable group, participate in the mobile human rights clinics and they bring forward their issues. This has enabled the organization to address more human rights issues. The Zimbabwe Human Rights Commission has managed to do investigations on eviction cases, eventually being able to resolve some of them and engaging the relevant duty bearers on some of the unresolved issues. They have assisted some of the internally displaced people with the IOM collaborations, assisting them with NFIs where necessary. The project has strengthened the eviction cases in terms of lobbying and advocacy, which has been a major challenge in the country. Um, I'll speak to the challenges that we've had is also in relation to the cases that we've had. I think when we do our cases, we make recommendations and I think sometimes recommendations are not within the control of the Commission. So these recommendations that we make, um, they, it's up to the people that we're recommending them to. So I think there needs to be more of a political will to implement those recommendations. I think that is a critical aspect of it. And I think just the continued collaboration just to try and continuously engage them on how um, these recommendations can be implemented. The Commission does not have enforcement mechanisms, so I think that's another gap that we have within the Zimbabwe Human Rights Commission Act, that we cannot enforce them or take them to court and say, well, can you implement this recommendation? So I think that gap is there in terms of um, enforcement of recommendations. In terms of uh, support, we direct support obviously came from uh, the, the, the Swedish embassy uh, through our consortium lead IOM. We were able then uh, to, ch to channel resources towards us because 
without these resources, we're not able to, to go out and do these, these activities. So that's, that's an area that we really want to, to acknowledge. And we were able to do uh, all these things through that uh, financial and also information support that we received from, from IOM. We also received um, information materials from, from IOM and these were also useful in terms of uh, visibility and acceptance of the intervention. In the world, and in Zimbabwe that is not exception, the demands for protection services are ever increasing. So are the gaps for service provision. As a consortium, the sources are viable for affected individuals and communities and also ensuring partners have the capacity to respond in time of need. We needed to have a coverage in the heart of to reach areas and in all 10 provinces of Zimbabwe and ensure support is provided to victims of human rights violation and all returning migrants.